So I'm walking, four fights in, it's eerie, so quiet outside. Like, it's usually kids playing boom, boom, boom. I don't know what's going on. I'm just walking because now the time, because usually when I get there, it is quiet because I get there before everybody because I'm trying to get to the motherfucking breakfast. Nigga try and eat, try and get here and eat. Fuck what they talking about. I'll come play after I eat. You know how many times I've been there and they didn't have the breakfast ready? I'm sitting over there waiting. Well, I'll, I'll be here when you, as soon as you get ready. You don't got no, you don't want to go play or nothing? No, nah, no, nah, I'm going to wait. Uh, I want to make sure I get a good plate. Uh, since it's just dust in here, you mind putting a little extra on my plate? I appreciate you, appreciate you. But now they have so many motherfucking fights, all the kids outside. These motherfuckers, so I'm walking. <laughs> so I'm going to try the long story short because I've been talking for a while. So I'm walking. And these motherfucking kids come like they was looking for me. Like they've been saying, we, we ain't caught your ass because you've been here so early for breakfast. Because it's walking straight. It's not like I had to turn to get to the school. From 60th, I walk six blocks straight to get to the school. So it's just after that fight, I'm just walking and there's no kids walking almost at school. None of that shit. I think the motherfuckers got there early for me. So as we're walking, I see like the whole sea of the school. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And they moving. They all moving. I know that crowd. That's a fight crowd. I'm like, damn, which fight they finna go see? Because you got to be popular to get a crowd like that. Like I told y'all, nigga, I used to call my brother, told me, you not popular. You're just well known. People are scared of you. They don't like you. So when I see the huge crowd, it's like the big fight. I'm like, damn, somebody popular finna fight. Or some girls and we looking for a titty to pop out. That's what bring the crowd. Popularity or possible titty popping out. So I see the crowd. I'm like, damn, who finna fight? But I'm like, man, fuck that fight. I'm tired of fighting for the day. I just want to get here and get this motherfucker breakfast. That's what I'm trying to get to, this breakfast. So as I'm walking and the crowd is going by me, I'm walking on like, let me go ahead and get over this way. So I can let the crowd go by as I go through because they got business to take care of. And as I'm moving to the right, getting out the street, because at first I was in the street to get out their way. Then I got on a sidewalk to get out their way. And I'm like, nigga, I cannot get out of their way. <laughs> so now that I'm getting back on a sidewalk, it just seemed like the crowd was turning toward me. And right in the middle of the crowd is always the person that's like um, the person that's going to fight and everybody's following them. And it's like a crowd, literally a crowd around you. So now the crowd is shifting toward me, which means that the point of origin of the crowd has to be facing me like an arrow. I look across the crowd to see what's facing me and notice that they've built a wall around me. Oh, this crowd looking for me. And as I look across and I look and see the motherfucker that's coming toward my way, it's one of the two most popular guys in the school. His name was Kenneth, was his name. Everybody called him Kenny. Kenny is the most popular guy in school alongside this other guy. Kenny was real dark-skinned, but he was, like, attractive to the girls. So he was the most popular, and they used to be like, he's the cute one. But it was this DMX-looking motherfucker who I cannot remember his name. He was cool as shit. He was just as popular as Kenny, but he wasn't considered the cute one. But he was still just as popular. Like something about this nigga. Motherfuckers love. He the reason I pulled on my only cigarette. Took a pull off one cigarette in my entire life. And it was because of him. And I can't remember his name. But I just remember he used to look like DMX. And we 10. Hey yo man. Hey yo. That's how he looked. He looked like everything he wanted to say started with hey yo. Like hey yo. I want some cookies. Cream. Cakes. Candies. He looked like that's how the fuck he say everything. But. Me, I'm new to the school. I'm not from the hood. Me and that motherfucker got cool because I guess his popularity was off being a real nigga. And me being a real nigga, <laughs> fuck you thought. We could connect on that. So I wouldn't think I have a problem like that because everybody wanted Ken and we going to call him DMX. Kid DMX. They wanted Ken and Kid DMX to fight to see who's going to be the top dog. Because that was another thing where I grew up. It wasn't you just was the popular because you was just cute or you had some. 
you had to be able to be there body in your grade ass and even ascend to another grade. So Kenny just happened to be like, he was like the pretty boy. You know, I'm the pretty boy. I whoop your ass. I ain't never believe that shit. I'm gonna tell you the truth. His skin was too flawless. Like no, <laughs> like no funny shit, but his skin was too flawless. Like, nobody that's fighting as much as take that much care of their skin. His fro never moved. He had the Steve Harvey before Steve Harvey. The motherfucker was lined up good. He had, he had a little gold chain. He had money, clearly. You know what I mean? I looked at that nigga and said, man, he must have. At that time, at that mindset, I just went, man, it'd be amazing to be Kenny because of the shit I'm going through. But he was popular for shit I couldn't relate to. But me and Kid DMX, real nigga, aggressive, who with the shits? Oh, yeah. I can relate to that all day, and we got cool. So the word was Kenny wouldn't fuck with anybody that fucks with DMX, Kid DMX. So I was cool, and I got that pass a lot. But I find out later on why this happened. So what I find out after this is that somebody made up a something about Ken and DMX kid that they're going to have to fight because it can only be one. And it's always, they got like little guys and shit. So if Ken, one of Ken guys win a fight, that goes in Ken favor. Like, oh, he got him with him. So yeah, you don't want no problems. Like they got real niggas behind them. And then if DMX, one of his guys win a fight, it was like that. But DMX didn't count as guys. DMX was like me where he's going to do the fight. So somehow because of my fighting, where it was like I wasn't in between a shit. They was two powerhouses on their own. I'm a new kid that's not even from this neighborhood. I'm just fighting for survival. But somehow my name get brought up because I'm racking up W's. Like I, and I don't get a crowd when I fight. I just whoop ass. And the ass whooping is so legendary that it gets around the school. Somehow it came up to the concept of because me and Kid DMX, we cool. So now my fights are racking up to his, which will make Kid DMX the new popular guy and me second because I'm whooping so much ass and Ken couldn't let me make him second. Basically it. Ken was used to being the number one guy. So instead of going for DMX, which clearly is like, what's their name? The, the boxes and shit everybody want to fight. I know it's Bud and um, Spencer. They was like that of this school. Because I'm whooping so much ass, and I guess my name is being known of a motherfucker that's whooping ass, and that's like, we got to take Q into consideration. And Ken wasn't having that shit. So he flips out. This is what I'm getting afterwards. He flipped out basically like, what? When I see him, I'm going to whoop his ass. Let me tell you something. Ken couldn't whoop my ass if I bent over and gave him a belt. I'm just telling you the truth. Me and DMX probably would have been a great fight. I feel like that shit would have been some shit they should have recorded. But I don't feel like we would have fought because the type of shit we connected on. We like real niggas. Niggas like us, we wasn't trying to fuck with nobody. It was, if you tried me, I was going to give you everything you wanted and then some. And really see if you about what you're talking about. So I felt like when two dudes like that come in contact, we don't never really have static. It's always, you know, just good harmony. Because we both appreciate peace. But I just had four fights. My knuckle is fucking. It feel like it's seeping into the middle of my hand. Like I'm in so much pain. My face was stinging. Oh, I didn't tell you guys this. It's cold as fuck outside. And I'm poor. I'm sorry. I'm poor. I don't have gloves. So all these fights were bare knuckling it with no gloves and a coat. With no feathers in it. My four fights. This is what I'm dealing with. So Ken is facing me. And he's walking up. And one thing. One thing I used to like about fighting. It was always a story. You always got a story right before the fight. I told you I'm weird. And I love stories. So even in all them fights. You get so many stories. So what happens is. When I say you get a story. When you walk up to the person to fight them. You just don't walk up and start hitting them. That's not what happens. What happens is you walk up and you make your declaration. Hey, the shit you said, I don't agree with. And by me not agreeing with, 
I will show you that I will whoop your ass to prove that I am superior, one, and two, that what you said is no longer valid. And when they say that, you have to, one, affirm the fight that you're not scared and you're willing to do it or you lose reputation points. You become scum and shit like that. And when you do that, you have another segment where you can talk shit about the person or stamp the approval of the fight by saying, come on, you got to do that. That's what you got to do. That's your role. So Ken walks up to me and makes his declaration. Hey, if you think, and then that's another thing, you lie. Why the fuck do we lie like we being recorded? As a kid, they walk up to you and lie about some shit that has nothing to do with you. Oh, bitch, I heard that you fuck Kenneth. You fuck Kenneth and you a slut and you know that's my man. And bitch, I got to fight you now. The girl be over there like, but I ain't never fuck Kenneth. <laughs> you got to fight. The motherfucker would just sit there and lie on you because whatever real reason they want to fight you, whatever insecurity they have, they wanted to fight you because you represent something that's a source of pain for them.